Hi, I'm John Doherty, and I'm the writer of ooh, lots of books, including There's a Pig Up My Nose, the Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face series, and my poetry collection, Dinosaurs and Dinner Ladies. Those are just a few of the books I've written, and I am here to say to you something very important, which is, hello. I think hellos are very important. What else do I think is important? What else did I want to say to you? Well, I wanted to say I hope you're having a good lockdown. Lockdown is still going on, isn't it? Even though, you know, it's not as bad as it was a couple of months ago, but it's still pretty difficult sometimes. Um, I'm not having too bad a lockdown, although I haven't had my hair cut since February. And I've broken my ankle. So that's not so nice. And something else is that I've been having more difficulty than usual reading. I love reading. And I don't know if some of you have been finding it difficult to read. Maybe some of you love reading, and but you're just not feeling so much like it. Something I've found is that at the moment I'm feeling more like reading books I know already. Maybe it's because lockdown's a bit strange and we don't know what's going to happen. So reading a book where I already know what's going to happen makes me feel better. Maybe that's what it is. But if you're having difficulty reading, why don't you try reading something you've read already, something you love? And probably some of you are having difficulty doing your work as well. I know that you're, a lot of you are having lessons at home and that's difficult sometimes, isn't it? And maybe your parents are going, get on with your work, and you really aren't feeling like it. Well, do you know what? I'm a writer, and I love writing, but I'm finding writing difficult as well. And I know a lot of writers are. It's a really weird situation, this lockdown. So don't worry if you're finding it weird. Don't worry if you're finding it strange. Don't worry if you keep finding yourself going, I just want to go out and go to school and do stuff. It's perfectly normal. Do you know what? I'm going to read something to you now. I'm going to read from Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face and the quest for the magic porcupine. And I'm going to read from the first chapter because I don't know if you know these books, but in Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face, the bad guys are the badgers. And the badgers spend an awful lot of time in prison, which is even worse than being in lockdown. So I'm going to read to you a little bit from chapter one of Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face and the Quest for the Magic Porcupine. Chapter one, in which our story begins. It was a dark and stormy night on the little island of Great Kerfuffle, and in the village of Loose Chippings, the streets were deserted. Nothing could be heard but the lashing of the rain and the crashing of the thunder and the thrashing of the wind. The rain lashed, and the thunder crashed, and the wind thrashed, and then they lashed and crashed and thrashed some more. After a bit, the rain tried thrashing, and the thunder tried lashing, and the wind had a go at crashing, but it sounded rubbish. So they swapped back, and the rain went on lashing, and the thunder went on crashing, and the wind went on thrashing. And that was about it, really. After about half an hour, it became clear that the whole story had started too early. So it waited for a bit, and then started again. Chapter 1 In which our story begins again, and the villainous badgers escape from prison. It was a dark and stormy night on the little island of Great Kerfuffle, and in the village of Loose Chippings, the streets were deserted. Nothing could be heard but the lashing of the rain, and the crashing of the thunder, and the thrashing of the wind, until the story started, and in the village jail, something stirred. The village jail was full of badgers. They had been there since the end of the last story, and they were bored, because there was nothing to do but drive the little car too fast round the Monopoly board, knocking over all the houses and hotels. They had once tried playing the game properly, but it was no fun, because the smallest of them, Stuart the Badger, had eaten all the pretend money. Now most of the Badgers were staring gloomily through the prison bars at the pouring rain. A few were driving the little dog too fast round the board, just for variety's sake, but they weren't really enjoying it. 
and two were sitting in a corner with the little top hat, trying to imagine it was a dustbin and taking turns to knock it over. Stuart the Badger was snuffling through the Monopoly box looking for something else to eat, but he found nothing except a lot of pink and peach coloured cards. He nibbled, nibbled thoughtfully on the corner of one, pretending it was a worm, but it didn't have the same wriggly quality that made worms so tasty. He tried another corner in case it was any different, but it wasn't. Just as he was about to try a third corner, the card was snatched from his paw. What's this? Harry the Badger asked gruffly. It's not a worm, Stuart the Badger explained. Or a dustbin. I can see that, said Harry the Badger, turning it over and grinning a badgerish grin. It's even better than worms and dustbins. Ooh, said all the other badgers, suddenly interested. They didn't know anything could be better than worms and dustbins. What is it? You'll see, said Harry the Badger, strolling over to the door in a way that he hoped made him look cool. Now all we need is a handy passerby. As it happened, somebody was just about to pass by the jail. His name was Blimey O'Reilly. He was out on this miser miserable night because he was going to visit his best friend, Gordon Bennett, and he was struggling onwards under the lashing of the rain and the crashing of the thunder and the thrashing of the wind and the flashing of the lightning and the bashing of the bats. The bats were bashing into him quite a lot because their ears had got all filled up with rain and they couldn't hear where they were going. Oi! said Harry the Badger. Let us out. Please, added Rolf the Badger, a big badger with a big badger that said Big Badger. He didn't think being polite would make any difference, but he was anxious to make his first appearance in the story before the end of the chapter. Oh no, said Blimey O'Reilly. The king said you had to stay in prison until the end of the next book. I know, said Harry the Badger, but that was before we found this he held up the card he had taken from Stuart the Badger. It said, Get out of jail, free. Blimey O'Reilly read it carefully. Does it still count if the corners have been nibbled? He asked. Oh, yes, said Harry the Badger persuasively, and all the other Badgers nodded and tried to look sincere. Oh, said Blimey O'Reilly. All right, then. And he opened the jail door. Ha, said Harry the Badger. Free at last. Yay! cried all the other badgers, and they rushed out of the cold grey prison into the world, free badgers once more. Then they rushed back in again. Yuck, they said. It's raining. Harry the Badger rolled his eyes. What does a bit of, ma of rain matter, he said, compared to freedom? But it's cold, the other badgers complained. Harry the Badger sighed and turned to Blimey O'Reilly. Can we borrow your umbrella? He asked. And if you want to know what happens next, you'll have to read Stink Bomb and Ketchup Face and The Quest for the Magic Porcupine. But whether you read that or not, I hope you get lots of things. I hope you've got lots of things at home you can read. I hope that your library reopens soon, if it's not open already, so that you can borrow some more things from that safely and keeping a safe distance from other people. Because stories are brilliant. Stories are great, and if you're having tr trouble with lockdown and if you're finding it difficult, then stories can help you through it. I hope they will. I hope you have a great day today. I hope lockdown continues to treat you well, or starts treating you well if it hasn't been. And I hope you stay so safe and healthy. My name is John Doherty. Thanks for listening. Bye. <laughs>